Hi, this is Hillary. And Anna Maria. <laughs> and we're reporting under the marquee on our first impressions of The Secret Life of Pets. I have to say, for me, it's a little bit on the slight side. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what you thought of it. I love the pet's relationship with their owners, but for me, actually, that was, I think, the best part of the movie, and I think it needed to be a little more. Let's see what you think. Um, I have some reservations about it, too. Parts of it I really, really enjoyed, but um, not quite up to Zootopia or some of those other fantastic animated films. But let's go back to my place and we can talk it over. Max the dog has a perfect life with his owner until she comes home with another dog. Duke is a big lummox who takes over Max's bed and food bowl until Max blackmails him into being a good dog. So you can't blame Duke too much when he drags Max off to an alley to dump him, an act that, unfortunately, embroils both of them with a tough, relentless gang of flushed animals, pets who've been abandoned by their owners and vowed to get revenge on the human race. So, what did you like about the movie? Okay. I loved the pet characters and their relationships with their people. In fact, for me, I think that was my favorite part of the movie. Um, and I gotta say, that bunny rabbit villain was <laughs> brilliant crazy. Mel Gibson could not have done it better. Um, what did you like? Um, well, um, I guess the, the pets and the relationship with their owners and how often the pets look like their owners was quite fun. <laughs> Uh, Bunny Rabbit was a great character. Mm. I liked the the general you know look of the story. The artwork mm. was was pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of groping for things uh -huh. because unfortunately it didn't hit a lot of buttons for me. Okay. Okay. So what didn't you like? Okay. Um, the the story was a little too slight for an adult audience. It's definitely a little kids movie, which is fine. You know, it plays on that level fine. Um, but uh, the thing that really bothered me the most was that they stole the climax from Max. Max was not the hero of the climax. Oh. That really bugged me a lot, and it just felt like a betrayal to his character not to let him be the hero in the climax. They goofed. That might be a yeah. little bit what's wrong with the character arcs, yeah. because one of the things that bugged me is that it didn't feel like it had enough of a character yeah. arc, and yeah, they gave the the he one who sort of was because he did go back for Duke, but the one who was successful in the rescue had the bigger character arc then, and the, and then he ends up stealing the movie. And You're I don't right. really I think really want to say have who the bigger character he did arc. totally. He and did. I I don't want to say who that is because I don't want to mm -hmm. ruin the the movie. But it was a mistake. Yeah. Um, and so that really kind of let me down <laughs> a lot yeah. and ended up kind of going, okay, feeling instead of, this was a good movie. You know? That's kind um, of where I am, too. Um, the, all the parts of it that were kind of important felt a little bit slight. Max yeah. does have an arc, but it's a little bit slight. There is a plot, but it's a little bit slight. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it was predictable, too. Very but, predictable. But... but I don't mind that usually. No, but yeah, uh, yeah I mean, an anticipating something happening is fine. I, I think mm -hmm. the problem is, is that the, the first two Despicable Me movies were wonderful. And these, this is by the same, you know, studio. Mm -hmm. So I expected something of that quality. But their last movie, Minions, wasn't as good. So maybe mm -hmm. things are dropping off for them. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of sorry to see that. Uh, mm -hmm. So... Okay, so what age range do you think this is good for? I think you're right that it's a little kid's movie. I would say anything up to age eight is going to thoroughly enjoy it. Age eight and up, they're going to start seeing that it's just not quite as meaty as, as the mm -hmm. kind of story that they're going to want. Well, they might like the villains. They think they would probably They'd enjoy like that. They'd like the villains. But yeah, it'd be a little slight They'll for them. enjoy it. It's yeah. enjoyable. But there's not much more there. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a little kid's movie. Um, there are mm -hmm. snakes in it, so if your kids are afraid of snakes, then 
um, be aware of that. I mean, mm -hmm. one, one snake bites bites the dust too. So, <laughs> so uh, I'll just mm -hmm. put that caveat out there. But uh, it is otherwise, yeah. it is very much a little kids movie. Yep. So how many <laughs> tickets are you giving it? I, I'm going to be a little generous and give it three tickets. Um, I think it's a good movie, and I think little kids will really enjoy it. Um, nothing much for adults. Uh, but um, but I'll give it three tickets. How about you? I'm act okay. This is surprising. I'm going to give it three and a half. Oh, you are okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, the pets and their owners had really heartwarming relationships, well, okay. and there was a lot of cute stuff around the pets themselves and what they did when they were owners were gone. And to me, that brings it up a, a half a ticket. And the the reason why I'm only three is they've been showing previews for this movie. For so long, it had built up so much anticipation in me that I was really looking forward to seeing it, and then I felt let down. So yeah. it's a three ticket. Yeah, and I'm not sure that I can necessarily yeah. rate it that way, but in all truth, the best part of the movies they showed in the previews, and that's, yeah. that's, a, that's always not a, a good idea. Yeah. So that's our review of The Secret Life of Pets. Um, sign on to our YouTube channel, leave us a comment, and we'll see you at the movies.